If you have a story you'd like to see featured on the channel, then go to mariesfield.com and send it my way. And of course, thank you. It has become an ongoing joke in my family that my birthdays are cursed. Just about every year, something happens on my birthday. Be it weird, disastrous, creepy, frustrating. There was just always something memorable there. I wasn't upset about it, though. Maybe as a kid, I probably took it differently. But now, as an adult, I just grow to expect it and... I can't even get mad about it anymore. I wanted to share some of the weirder incidents that occurred though. For this story, I had to explain my appearance, at least as a young child. My uncle always poked fun at me, calling me pretty boy. I had super curly blonde hair. Trimming it was always difficult to do, partially because I had troubles holding still, and also because it was hard to make it even, I suppose. I also have bright green eyes. I still have the bright green eyes and some people thought I edited my pictures because of how they looked. I also had pale skin but freckles everywhere. Both of my parents are gingers. I don't know where the blonde hair came from though. So when my parents took me to places like the doctors or to get my hair cut or to even get family photos taken, they always made comments about how adorable I was and confused me for a girl. That didn't stop them from saying I should be in pageants or I would be great as a model. Weird stuff like that. My parents just kind of took the comments, thanked them, and moved on. As a young child, I didn't understand what they were talking about, but it did get annoying as I grew up, which is why I started shaving my head. Anyways, so for one of my birthday parties as a kid, my parents took me to this local arcade place. It was like a Chuck E. Cheese, but without animatronics and more games. They had a few entertainers that were there on random days too. There was a balloon guy one time that made balloon animals and hats. There was another guy that did magic tricks, and another that played a bunch of different musical instruments at the same time. So there were a couple of people like that there as well. All in all, the party itself was great up until the end. My mom was talking to another parent, and I told them that I wanted more nuggets before we left or something like that, and she told me to wait or ask my dad. I looked around as much as a kid would, and when I couldn't find him, I decided to just wander off to see if I could find tokens on the ground or games to play. While I was pretty much crawling on the ground, a woman crouched down next to me holding a token and asked if I was looking for it. I smiled and took it from her and remembered looking around for my favorite game to play. It was this game where you were a bear and you had to basically use a steering wheel as a controller to go left and right to catch apples in your mouth. I won a lot of tickets from it, so I usually spent most of my tokens on it expecting it to work again. As I walked over to it, this woman followed me and again crouched down to be at eye level with me. She told me happy birthday and I asked her how she knew and she said because she was invited as she was part of the family. I asked who she was since I didn't recognize her and she said she was my aunt, my dad's sister. That was all the verification I really needed at the time, so I said hi and continued the game. After a few moments, she asked me where my parents were and I said I couldn't find my dad and my mom was talking to someone. She then made comments about how pretty I was and that I could make a lot of people happy. Confused by this, I asked her what she meant and she vaguely talked about other mommies and daddies that want a kid to make them happy too. I remember at this point thinking, cool, I don't know what I have to do with any of this, so I continued to go play the game. She then asked if I would like to go with her to meet new moms and dads, and I said I liked mine, but she said that I wouldn't have a choice anyways because they're going to be having another kid, which meant 
I wasn't making them happy anyways. This is where she got my attention. I was scared that I was in trouble or that my parents really didn't love me anymore. She told me that's why I needed to go with her now. That way I could pick my new parents. Through tears and heartbroken, I agreed and took her hand as we walked out of the building. I heard screaming as we left, but didn't pay any attention to it at the time until I clearly heard my dad's booming voice yell my name. I looked up to see him running towards us, and the woman yanked on my arm, nearly dragging me as she ran towards her van. She tried shuffling to open the door, but my dad caught up to us, grabbing her by the wrist and pulling me back and telling me to go to my mom. I shuffled back towards her as I saw her in the doorway crying, and she grabbed onto me tightly. My dad is now yelling at this woman, asking who she was, all while she was begging him to let her go. The cop showed up and I was brought back inside with my mom as they talked to my dad. I told them what the lady had told me and they explained that none of that was true. They said people don't have more kids because they don't want the ones they already had, but could because they just wanted more kids to love, things like that. My mom also told me that she started looking for me at some point in time that I was playing the game since it was towards the front and she was more in the back by the prize room. That's when she saw me walking out with a woman and could tell I looked sad or scared. My dad was also talking to someone but was closer to the front, so my mom yelled at him and pointed towards me. That's when my dad took off towards us. I don't know whatever happened to that lady, but let me tell you my surprise and fear when I learned about a week or two later that my parents were having another kid. They may have had to calm me down a bit on that one. Again, now it's a joke in the family when something happens that they're just going to trade me in even now at 27. Another event that occurred was at my birthday party around the age 14, I think. I handed out invitations to those that I wanted to go in between classes. If I didn't give them to everyone in the classroom, then the teacher wouldn't let us pass them out, to be fair. I was limited on the amount of people that I could invite, which was fine because there wasn't a huge list of people I really wanted to be there anyways. In fact, there was this one kid I was semi-friends with, we'll call him Chad. Chad was actually a new student so no one really knew him there, but he quickly tried to fit in with different cliques to make friends. At least he tried instead of just sitting by himself every day, waiting to be invited to something. I can at least give him that. However, his personality, his jokes, and just some of his demeanors were just weird and maybe a little above our age. Some of us had crushes and boyfriends and girlfriends, sure, But he was very sexual with his comments, like way more colorful and in-depth than what you would expect 13 and 14 year olds to know about or say. Like, even for me and my friends being raunchy, it was uncomfortable. So I didn't really hang out with him outside of school, therefore I also didn't initially invite him to my party and didn't really think twice about it either. What I didn't realize though was that my mom knew his mom from the PTA meeting, and he, of course, was a completely different kid around my mom. She saw this kind and polite boy that was new to the community, and that maybe I just didn't know him enough, and invited him to my party. Yay. My party was on a Saturday, and she decided not to bring this up until the Friday before. I explained to her that he was weird, but... At that age, I was too embarrassed to repeat some of the things he said or did, so she just said that I should get to know him and that this was the way to do it. Not that I had a choice, but I reluctantly agreed. Enter the day of the party. Everything was going great. My friends all showed up, and we were having a great time. My little sister was six or seven, so she was occupied with her own toys and games and being watched by my grandma for the most part. Then Chad showed up. 
It was normal at first. He came over and said hi. He brought a present and acted normal throughout cake and ice cream and games. Then, when we were all left to our own devices, I was just hanging out in our tree with my friends. We had a little ladder set up that we could climb the trunk and just sit up in the tree. Chad joined us and he made some weird comments about the few girls that I had invited that I am not repeating. At the time, I did have a crush on one of them, so I didn't like it and basically told him to stop because it was messed up. That's when he made a similar comment about my sister. At that point, I could tell my friends were uncomfortable too, so I remember telling him he was gross, that was my little sister, and that's why no one liked him around. It was awkward for a second, but still smiling, Chad dropped out of the tree as he made a motion like he was shooting himself in the head and then walked off into the house. My friends all had mixed reactions to that, but we just tried to move on. After a while of us not seeing him come back out, I decided to go check on him to make sure he wasn't doing something weird when I started hearing my mom and grandma shouting back and forth about something. They sounded scared, so I went to find them to see them banging on the door to my sister's room and my sister crying from the other side of it. When my mom noticed me standing there, she yelled at me to get my dad, so I ran off to find him. We both ran back to my sister's room, where my grandma was now on the phone with 911, and my dad immediately started body slamming the door. He finally broke it down and he was hit with a bunch of smoke. Something in the room had caught fire, and the door was locked, and no one knew how it happened. My grandma felt really bad for the longest time because she thought she may have accidentally locked it when she left the room, but it was one of those knobs that you have to push in and turn, so you couldn't really do it on accident. She also typically left the door open in case she woke up or something and could hear her coming out. After the police came and they all talked about it, they determined the fire was intentionally set after finding candle wax and a burnt stuffed animal. There was something else that was part of the origin of the fire, but I don't remember it now. Also, it was just by her toy chest and dresser, which is why there was so much smoke, but thankfully, it didn't damage much other than her toys, some clothes, and part of the wall. Anyways, after all of this, we had to end the party and have people go home early, all while having to explain to my parents why this was happening. My mom was eyeballing all of my friends, trying to figure out who could have done this. It was pretty terrifying, as well as embarrassing, having your mom pretty much interrogate your friends and their parents. After everyone was gone, then they talked with me about what happened and told me because of how serious of a situation it was. We had to think about who all went in and out of the house, if I thought of or knew anyone that would try something like that and so forth. That's when going through the order of things, I had mentioned Chad going into the house and I went in there after a while since he hadn't come out. After describing which one he was to my grandma, she said she saw him coming out of the hallway but thought he had used the bathroom which was in the same hall as mine and my sister's rooms. That's when we realized that he was nowhere to be found after he left the house. His mom never showed up to get him. He was just gone. Then I had to tell them more about him and why I didn't really like him, which was awkward as hell. So after my mom did her thing and tracked his house down, his mom got him to admit what he did. He really tried to light my sister, her held my house on fire for the fun of it. I didn't see him in school after that, but we did get an apology letter in the mail from his mom, as well as a gift card to somewhere to replace things that were lost. I believe my mom stopped doubting me when I told her I didn't like someone in my class. So yeah, there's a few crazy birthday events for you. 
That's why I literally tell my wife to just treat it like another day. That way, we're less likely to spontaneously combust or something. I might share some more of my birthday horrors with you if you ever want them. Last May, a few of my friends and I decided to have a birthday celebration for one of our friends that was turning 19. Her birthday was on Friday the 13th, so she wanted to do a sort of Halloween theme with all of us in costumes and go to a local bar. We live in Canada. So we got all dressed up, some of us in a little more sexier looking costumes, some of us in some dumb costumes. So there were five of us totals. The birthday girl Mandy was a witch, Angel dressed as an angel, I was a zombie, and Cassie and Layla were ketchup and mustard bottles. We all met at Mandy's house and started with a few shots. Cassie didn't drink, so she was our DD that night. After we had our liquid confidence, we headed out to the bar, no longer fearing what people would think of us being in full costumes in the middle of May. When we got there, it was actually quite the opposite of what we expected. Some of the patrons took pictures and asked what the occasion was, and even bought us some drinks, so we were genuinely just having a good time. However, at one point, there was a group of guys that came in, three of them. It was one of those moments where they opened the squeaking door, so we all looked and then continued dancing and laughing. As with everyone else that was there, they were staring at us off and on until they finally approached us. They made some cheesy comment about the angel costume and then asked us why we were dressed up, so we again explained it was for our birthday. They wished her a happy birthday and bought us all drinks as well. We thought that would be the end of it, but they seemed to linger around watching us. None of us were really giving them any attention. Cassie and Layla were dating. I had a boyfriend and Mandy and Angel were just doing their own thing and having fun. So there definitely weren't any signals telling them they were welcome to stay and hang with us. However, it was a bar and no one reserved anything, so they had every right to be over by us too. We were in a smaller section in the back by the dartboard and pool table. After a while, we all noticed they would lean in and say something and then look over at us and nod or point. I think we all anticipated what they may have wanted and we really weren't interested in picking up a date, so we decided to leave and find another bar. As we were walking out, one of the guys hollered out asking where we were going and I said home. We found another bar that wasn't too far from the first one and went in to continue our fun. However, those same three guys came strolling in not long after us. We all looked at each other, making sure we weren't crazy and tried to pretend like we didn't see them. This time, we sat at one of the back tables and decided to order something to eat so we weren't just running on alcohol. It was only a matter of time that these guys would finally come over and, of course, one of them sat in a chair next to me, one sat on the other side next to Angel, and one continued standing. They asked us how old we were and we were hoping if we were honest that they'd leave us alone, knowing we were still pretty young. But instead, they seemed to be pretty happy with this idea. They made comments on how good we all looked and offered to buy us more drinks while slipping in the comment about how we must still want some since we lied about going home. I then said something about wanting to get something to eat before going home, which is why we ended up at that bar. But ultimately, we all declined the drinks, now no longer feeling comfortable around them. We ordered a plate of nachos to share, but when it arrived, no one immediately touched them due to the awkwardness of the air. So the guy closest to me pulled them closer and started eating them. As they were devouring our nachos, they started laughing and talking about themselves and we didn't know what to do. We just sat there looking at each other while occasionally giggling when they said something and laughed. At one point, I had taken out my cell phone and was texting my boyfriend to let him know what was happening with my left hand 
which wasn't exactly easy for me to begin with. However, the guy must have noticed and was obviously mad. I could tell by the way he slammed his hand down on the table and said, Hey! No phones at the table! After looking at me angrily, he then started laughing and so did the other two. To say I was freaking out would be an understatement. I don't know what their plans were, but I was too afraid to get up and leave, but even more terrified of what might happen if I stayed there. Thankfully, Cassie stood up and started walking away when the guy said in his booming voice, Hey, where are you going? And without flinching, without a stutter or a hint of fear, she said, to the bathroom, and she kept walking. I only hoped she had a plan and waited for her to return. It probably felt a lot longer than it actually was, but she finally came back and without acknowledging them, told us we should go. We all nodded in agreement, but we're all waiting to see who the first person to stand up would be. That's when Angel shot up real quick and walked towards Cassie. The guys then tried inviting us back to their place for more drinks, as if they hadn't already terrified the hell out of us. We all declined and finally got the courage to stand up and started walking towards the front of the bar. And of course, they were following right behind us as if they were part of our party. That's when we noticed Cassie's whole plan coming together. At the front of the bar was her dad, in full police uniform, greeting us with open arms. He apologized for being late and then immediately followed up with, Those guys with you? We all looked back and noticed they were just standing around, trying not to make eye contact with us. He then followed us outside and we were all thanking Cassie for her quick thinking and for him showing up to save us. Her dad has always been such a gentle giant, but not that you could tell by just looking at him. So I was relieved that those guys seemed to be pretty intimidated by him, or at least the uniform. He followed us back to Mandy's place and made sure no one else followed either. And thankfully, we never saw or heard from them again. We finished our night inside watching dumb horror movies on Netflix and eating all of her snack foods so we didn't let it ruin our night. We're a lot more careful now when we go out to places like that and I now have an emergency text set up so I can send it quickly. After hearing some similar stories on a few forums I follow, I felt compelled to share an experience I had as a child. This happened when I went to my friend Brody's birthday party around the age of 11. Brody and I were pretty decent friends at the time. We hung out after school at each other's houses before, but it was usually at mine. That was typically both of our preferences, thanks to his older brother. Brody had a brother that I'll call Chris, that was around 16 at the time of this event. Chris was a complete ass. He bullied not only Brody, but any of his friends that he had over, including me. He would barge into his room when we were in there, make remarks about us, throw things at us, and leave. He even, on occasion, would try to do things physically to us, like if we were walking by, he would stick his leg out to trip us, smack us in the back of the head, or push our head down on the table as he walked by. It didn't matter to him, as long as he had some way to bully us. And if he wasn't afraid to do it to me, I'm sure he treated Brody's other friends the same way. The only time he didn't really do this was when his mom was around. She wouldn't tolerate it and would immediately stop him, yell at him, whatever she had to do to make him stop. Needless to say, when she was home, I preferred to be in the same room as her. For the party, Brody's mom was renting out the local community center to have the party, which meant more people and more opportunities to get lost in the crowd of people. There were probably about 20 kids or so that showed up, and most parents stayed around too. My parents had dropped me off and left. After a few hours and all the games being played and cake being eaten, we started to come up with our own games to play. 
One of those was a version of tag where one person is it, but if they start chasing you, you have to call out someone else's name, so they chase them instead. So, as we started playing this, who else walks in but Chris and two of his friends? I know I was pretty disappointed in this, but the fact that a few of our mutual friends had the same reaction told me everything I needed to know. He came over to us, grabbed Brody by the head and told him happy birthday, then he asked what we were playing. When we told him, he said he wanted to play too. My fear was that he was going to ask to be it, and one of us was going to get seriously hurt. I was half right. Surprisingly, he did not ask to be it. But he and his friends got in the circle with us, and we all began. Our friend that was it started chasing someone else, and as my attention is on the friend being chased, I failed to notice Chris approach me until I had the wind knocked out of me. I fell to the ground trying to figure out what happened when I finally felt a bunch of pressure on my back. Once I could finally breathe again, I realized that the pressure was someone on my back, like sitting on me or holding me down. Chad then got on his knees with his head on the floor looking at me with an ugly and creepy grin. I tried fighting it to get up, but the one on my back had a hold of my arm and was twisting it backwards. I was in excruciating pain from my arm to my face and stomach and I was already having troubles breathing. Just when I think I'm probably just going to get beat up, I see Chris bring a little pocket knife up to my face and he asked me if I wanted a party favor. I started screaming, then I heard the other kids screaming and crying. At the same time, Brody was letting out these horrible cries for help but didn't know what to do. I could tell he was scared and, hell, too scared to approach too. We were only 10, 11 years old. We were not a threat to three 16-year-olds. Thankfully, after what felt like an eternity, I heard Brody's mom yelling for Chris to get off of me. I could see his face instantly change. He tried to scramble to his feet all while hiding the knife. However, he didn't do a very good job because the way he stood up and slid his hand back, he still ended up cutting part of my neck and chin. Once he was up, I got to my feet as well, holding my face from the pain. His mom yelled at him and made him and his friends leave immediately, which they did. She then rushed me to the restroom to help clean up my face, but I could tell by the look on her face, it wasn't good. She kept apologizing to me and hugging me with tears in her eyes. I was only 11, but man, I felt so sorry for her. She was always such a kind lady, and Brody was always chill too. I never understood why or how Chris turned out the way he did. Once we finished in the restroom, she brought me back out to the others and asked me to stay by her so she could call my parents. They came and picked me up shortly after and took me to the hospital. I had to get eight stitches. That night was pretty crappy after that. My mom was pissed about the whole thing as I remember her blaming Brody's mom for not paying attention, but she wasn't even at the party. I tried to tell her that he wasn't at the party at the start and just showed up, so I didn't think he was supposed to be there, but it didn't matter to her. She thought the right thing to do was to press charges against Chris. Thankfully, that didn't really go anywhere, and his mom settled it by agreeing to pay the hospital bills. I may have been a kid at the time, but as an adult now, I don't really feel like that was the best course of action, but I also don't really talk to my mom anymore. That may be related, who knows. Unfortunately, this definitely strained the friendship between Brody and I. I definitely wasn't allowed to be over there anymore, and any time I asked if he could come over, there was always a reason why he couldn't. Because of this, we hung out at school, but that was it, and we slowly drifted apart until we eventually moved and I completely lost touch with him. I really feel bad for Brody because I'm afraid I probably wasn't the only friend he lost because of his brother. Chris just for some reason was evil, and I still have no idea why. 
All I know is that I have a permanent scar on my chin and large gatherings still kind of scare me. But I hope Brody and his mom are doing okay. And I hope Chris got whatever kind of help he needed. And I hope I never meet him again. Oh, and sorry about my mom too. So that, my friends, was a collection of scary birthday stories. First one that we're doing on the channel. Thought it would be a good time to do it since my birthday is on the 13th of April and Raven's is on the 22nd. So it's fitting. Thankfully, I don't have any uh, scary things that have happened on my birthday that I can think of other than having an American Idol themed birthday party because that was popular whenever I was a preteen, I guess. And you just had to listen to a bunch of kids sing karaoke. That probably a little cringy now, but that's probably about the worst that I can think of. But if you did enjoy this video, please do give it a like below. And if you'd like to hear more content like this, consider subscribing. And lastly, don't forget to leave a comment on your thoughts or let me know when is your birthday? I'd like to celebrate that with you. And with that being said, friends, I hope you have a fantastic rest of the day. And until next time, take care.